Hey all, and welcome back to Fuzzy Dutch Gaming and a new video on the channel going over a new farming strategy that I've been trying out that's really aimed at people who might only have two to three hours to play um, in a session and they don't have five, six, seven hours a day to sit down and grind a big expensive mapping strategy. Now, the benefits of the strategy I'm going to run through is it's very, very cheap and quick to set up. You self-sustain pretty much everything that you need to continue the maps and everything that you drop is sellable in bulk for Chaos or Divines super, super quickly. Um, so the tab that you're looking at here is 28 maps that I ran. The timer at the bottom is basically how long it took me to sell um, all of the loot in bulk in Chaos. I was quite slow, uh, but that's kind of me being honest. It took me 15 minutes to convert the tab into what you're looking at here. And this is the main reason I like the strategy. The strategy is fun, simple, and pretty much any build can do it as long as you've got an end game-ish viable build. The reason I love it is because all the stuff sells for chaos in bulk and then you can just bulk sell your chaos for divines. And that's the one thing that I really look at more than anything else for a strategy is how easy is it to liquidate all of my uh, income that I get from mapping because it's no good having 200 different types of item drop and I have to wait until I farm for two weeks to sell it all in bulk. I want to be able to see how much I've made each time I do a mapping session. So I know that I can log on, run 28 maps, sell the bulk, and this is roughly what I have in my stash. Now I did have one raw divine drop, but other than that, there was nothing out of the ordinary that dropped. Um, I had a div card drop that was worth 60C, and I had a sacred blossom from Harvest. Other than that, it was all Harvest juice and stuff that drops from Red Altars. So if I quickly nip into Excellence next and have a look um, at the tab I've just showed you, it's valued at eight divines. If I take the raw divine out of it, we'll call it seven. Now I'm going to do the profit per map because I don't like doing it hourly because everyone runs at a different rate. So if we say it's seven divines over 28 maps, you're looking at quarter divine profit per map. I've already taken all the expenditure out of the tab. So what you're looking at is, is the profit from the strategy. Um, so if we then times that by our 250 cows for divine, you're looking at 62 and a half cows per map. And I was running these at about three minutes per map. So if this sounds something that, that interests you, I will jump into the strategy now and then I will go over why this is so profitable and how I've managed to make that sort of currency running a map strategy with basically no investment. So what we'll do first is talk about that actual strategy. I'm also going to explain how to sell your loot uh, efficiently and quickly and how to turn your chaos into divine orbs at the end of the video. So you should be making more than what I've made on this strategy. And the reason being I've left one league mechanic blank. So the strategy basically revolves around growing hordes, which gives you extra pack size per scarab. We're taking all of these map modifier nodes here to get our modifiers increased. So stuff like pack size and quantity, but it is obviously going to increase the negative mods on a map as well. And then we're taking all of the harvest nodes, all of the map sustain nodes, and then I'm taking shrines. The reason I'm taking shrines is because I just want something simple while I try and level my character to 100. Um, so shrines help me out, but they're really not that necessary because depending where they turn up on the map and what shrines they are, depends how much they're going to benefit your map. I would say overall, they didn't really affect it that much. So this is more there as a placeholder. So you could decide you don't want to run shrines, so you would take them out. And then you could always put in, since essences are close by, you could do your essence nodes. And that means in every map, you're going to get a good few chaos guaranteed from your essences. You're also very close to harbinger nodes, so you could spec into harbinger. Uh, but it is something I tested and I really didn't like it. Unless you get Fracturing Shards drop, they're not profitable. You have to wait too long even when they've got the quick spawn. That it almost takes double the time to clear the map. And when I looked at what I had at the end of it, it was just quicker not to run them and just run maps a lot quicker. Um, so yeah, all you're doing is you are running Fortune Favors of Brave on the map device, which costs 3C. Uh, because that gives you more quant and pack size and rarity. You are going to put in four rusted scarabs in to give yourself another 20% pack size. And then you're just chiseling, alkin, and varlin the maps. I've not even re-rolled maps if they hit low pack size. I'm just alkin going, avoiding any mods that you aren't able to run. Other than that, the only other expenditure is some rusted scarabs. And you can buy them in bulk for, they're about 0.9 chaos per scarab if you buy them in bulk. Um, so let's say 1C. So if you wanted to do 28 maps, you would go and buy 112 rusted scarabs, which is you would buy in chaos. And then it's just your map, your chisels, your outs. That's it. We're not running any sextants because we want to sell all the ones that we have dropped. I think with sextants being at sort of 3.5 chaos each, do we want to spend basically that per map? No, because they're not really going to help us 
um, on our strategy and we also don't take the for use node on the tree so you're much better off just not putting sextants onto your watchstones um, so the way the strategy works is i'll do a very quick map showcase of one i'm running city square so if we go here i've got all my favorites set to city square and then i've favorited forbidden woods because it connects to it and it's quite a nice layout to run if you ignore the boss um, so i would run maybe 16 city squares see what my map in sustain is like if i'm slightly down you're going to get tons of forbidden woods drop you can just run those instead uh, and ignore the boss as long as it's not one that would drop uh, an invitation and the idea of the strategy is that you are in and out as quickly as possible you do the harvest you kill the boss first so then you're only going to get minion altars you're going to go and pick up your sanctum and then you're going to get out of the map and dump your loot and for me it's around on average three minutes quicker when there isn't a harvest slightly longer um, when there is but you will get the harvest in the majority of your maps um, so we'll just go in and find a city square uh, and as i said i have got a quick character he's not quick in between packs if there's no monsters but when it's got buffs up it's very very quick um, so if your character is not quite as quick and you might be four minutes to complete a map um, then just you know include that in your breakdown in terms of how much you're expecting to earn from the strategy um, so we're just going to go in and we're going to get some scarabs so what i would recommend is that you roll these maps all at once so you get all your scarabs ready you chisel and out all of your maps at once and then that is your setup time done then you just put in a map complete the map come out put in the next map and while that's loading you dump your loot and then you carry on um so we've chiseled and out our map we've got our sextants uh, so we've got our scarabs ready to go oh i've already got some in here um so we'll just bring these over there and then you just fortune favors the brave and you're going into the map and it is super quick as I say, because we're doing Fortune Favors of Brave, you'll get stuff like Harbingers, you'll get Beyond. Um, you will get stuff that's going to add value to your maps. Um, Harbingers I would do just because they won't turn up that often, but it's up to you. It can just be a bit annoying ignoring them because they can get in the way. Excuse my computer. The first map of the day is always really, really bad. I hope I don't die because I've got quite a lot of XP on the line at level 99. So it's our first minion altar. We've got Greater Embers. So then you're going to go to the middle and find a boss. Gonna go and clear that out. It's popped up, so now I've cleared the boss. We're gonna go. As I said, I've took altars just because I haven't settled on a second uh, lead mechanic yet. Shrines, even not altars. So you can see we're already picking up some decent loot. And then what we'll do is we'll dump this loot at the end of the map, and we'll just have a look at the value of it. Uh, so we're going to go in. You're prioritizing yellow life force because it's way more expensive. But if the blue is triple, I would take the blue. Um, but overall, if you get tier three monsters in yellow, I would take them. I have no idea why he's so tanky. Uh, so again, we've got yellow. Pick whatever one you like. Because they were the same. Now, because we're prioritizing yellow life force, which I'll go on to in a minute when we revisit um, the Atlas tree, you're going to get them turn up in a lot of your maps. Uh, so we've got three tier three ones here, which is nice. So we've got an absolute ton there because it looked like it duplicated it. Again, this is because of the... Um, pack size and the passage we've got on the atlas tree we've got very lucky in this one i've got more yellows do not expect this much every map i've no idea why this performance is so bad it was fine earlier on and i think that should be it no we have another plot um if you don't get any T3 beast, I would ignore the plot. You're probably going to get 30 or 40 life force out of it. It's not worth the time. So when you pick up the last bit of your life force, you go back into harvest and you carry on. Now, I know the flavor of the month at the moment is blue altar farming with harvest and doing pack size, but honestly, the loot you get from the um, Eldritch altars in terms of exile more than makes up for it as you'll see um in the long run 
So I've taken lesser embers off my loot filter because they're not worth a chaos. I don't want to pick anything up and it isn't worth a chaos on average. So this map's taking a bit longer because it's been very, very lucrative. Uh, but obviously you don't mind a map taking longer when you've got lots of stuff that's worth money uh, dropping on the floor. Um, so we're just going to clear up the last bit of this map. Horizons, I'm not sure, should be on the loot filter. Uh, but I've left them on for now just for re-rolling maps if I want to. It means I don't have to buy them. So we've cleared the map. There was our Sanctum right at the end. So we'll go and collect that. And then we're done. So we're just going to very quickly dump this loot in Excellence Next just so we can see um, what the worth of it is. Now, as I said, that was quite a lucrative map. Don't expect every map uh, to be like that. So if we just go and do a new profile. So for that one map, we got nearly half a divine we got 95 chaos um worth of loot and like i said you're not always going to get these amounts like getting 1350 yellow is very unlikely actually it's worth more than that yeah this is over quarter of a divine here for 1350 yellow life force um so just alone with that we've got around 65 chaos with that alone and i've obviously got awakened sextants that are actually three and a half they're not two and a half so this is probably more like 120 chaos uh, just from that one map but you will get maps where you get very little. You might not get a harvest. You might get rubbish altars. Um, so they obviously balance out. But this is the sort of loot that you're going to pick up from every map. These four things here, once you've got enough, will sell in bulk super easy and super quick. And um, which we'll come to at the end uh, of the video. Um, and that's kind of the strategy in terms of mapping. You get in, do it as quick as you can, do your harvest. Click your altars once you've killed the boss. Go and pick up your sanctum. You leave. You dump your loot in your stash tab. Put the next map in with your scarabs. Fortune favors the brave, and off you go. So one thing I want to cover off, and I'm sure it's a question a lot of you are asking, is why is the strategy so lucrative in terms of returns? All you're doing is harvest, you've not got any lead mechanics on the map device, and you're not really putting any investment into them. Um, and it's twofold. One, red altars have sort of been forgotten about. Um, everyone seems to be farming blue altars, and the price of the currency that comes out of it backs that up as well. The red currency and the red invitations are more than the blue. And that's because a lot of people are doing harvest-based strategies, which you want to get quant on. So they're doing a similar strategy to what I'm doing in killing the boss. They're then going up and picking up the player quant altars from Eater, and then they're going into harvest at the end of the strategy. Now, I've ran this strategy as well. Works really well. You do get a lot more harvest juice out of it, but you get more out of it if you invest more. And I want a strategy where I don't have to worry about buying compasses uh, and things like that. And like I said, red altars are definitely being slept on at the moment the currency that drops in them is pretty insane in terms of value and the fact that you get it all of the time so there was a stage when everyone's farming red currency when greaters was way less than a chaos um sextants were about two to 2.5 regrets you could get like two or three for one chaos and also i'm making plummeted in price as well because everyone started running red altars early on because they were great with little investment and they still are so if we take a look at orbs of i'm making to start with i've got 20 if we look at the stock, you can sell these for 1.75 chaos each. Grand embers, if you've got 10, you're selling these for 6 chaos each, and that will be easy to sell. Even stuff like regrets, which drop really regularly, are almost at a chaos if you've got a decent amount. And um, so as you can see here, the bulk is sort of 0 0.8, I would say, is a standard price for it. Um, so 4 chaos for every 5 that you had drop. Um, so if we look at awakened sextants, even with just 9, you can sell them for three and a half chaos easily. Like these listings, I'm not even sure exist um, or they don't know how to price their items. They're way too cheap. You can price at 3.5 and you will insta sell sextants. Um, I probably wouldn't sell nine. I'd probably wait till I've got 10 or 20. Um, but yeah, three and a half chaos for each of these. And then the last thing to look at, as I said, is greater embers. Now I'd wait till we've got a few more of these because I doubt anyone's going to buy nine. Um, but there was a time when these were plummeting in price. But if you add 30 now, you can nearly get two chaos for each of them. Um, so you could price them at 1.8, you'd sell them fairly quickly. So everything that drops from these altars is worth money. It sells in bulk for chaos, along with the life force. So if we look at life force at the moment, 5,100. And the last lot I sold for this, I got insta whispered by about seven people. So you could probably do 5,000. So just from that one map, we've got well over quarter of divine um, in life force. And then what I would do 
which we'll come on to in a bit anyway, is I'd then change my chaos up for divines. And the way you do it is you look at what the price is. So everyone's priced in for like 250. If you were happy to lose one chaos per divine, all you would do is you would go into um, your currency tab, which would have chaos in it, and you would price it and you would say, I want one divine for 251 um, chaos orbs. So we'll do divine. And you will get whispered by three or four people for this instantly. And you'll change it up to divines, which is what's happened with mine and why my currency tab uh, for this strategy looks so clean. Another thing to talk about is loot filters. Having the right loot filter could basically double your income and double your efficiency because you don't want to be filtering through lots of garbage on the ground that drops. So if you want to use the loot filter that I was using in the uh, video, then I'd recommend going onto my profile. There'll be a link in the video description and follow the loot filter called Strict 320. I've basically filtered it so that it stops showing junk stuff like the flask orbs and lesser currencies, um, most rares and things like that. It's, it's probably still not optimal. There's probably more things I can drop out the loot filter like um, fractured items if they're not T1 bases. Um, but overall, this is a really good loot filter to use because you know if currency is highlighted on the ground that you should pick it up. Um, the only thing that's on there that you might not want to pick up is portal scrolls only because I get fed up um, of buying them from the vendor. So big stacks of portal scrolls i get to show up on the ground other than that you can be pretty sure that if something highlights on your loot filter that's currency uh, you should be picking it up and selling it and um, so all you need to do if you've never used someone else's loot filter before is click the link in the video description to my profile you'll navigate across to item filters find the one that says strict 320 and then you just click follow that will then turn up in your list of filters anytime i update it if i make it more efficient or i make changes to make it better you're going to get that updated version automatically. Um, so before we go and close out the video, I thought we'd actually better quickly touch on Pantheons because it's quite important for this mapping strategy. Because you're doing XR Coulters, you're going to get a ton of burning ground drop everywhere. So you have to run Soul of Aberath um, if you can't like outleach or out regen the burning ground. In fact, I would recommend running it anyway because it can be quite harsh, especially when it might be combined with some of the map modifiers. Um, so you definitely want to run Aberath to get your Burning Ground immunity. And then to make your experience quicker, you want to run Soul of Lunaris. Um, honestly, I'm mainly using it for the 1% movement speed for each enemy nearby, up to 8%. Because we've got massive pack size, we've pretty much always got that buff up. If you have a Sanctified Relic that gives you movement speed, I'd consider running that. The only other thing I think is quite beneficial and important for this strategy is you ideally want to be immune to elemental ailments. I would even consider if you're not ailment immune, dropping an aura, whether that be a damage or a defensive aura and putting in purity of elements. It's just going to mean you literally don't need to worry about any of the altars that you're clicking. The mobs are fairly easy anyway. Yes, you might click something where they get 100% fizz as fire, uh, but you're not going to notice it. It's a normal enemy. They're not going to do too much damage to you. And as long as you're not a super glass cannon build, you're not going to have any issues. The only other thing I'd recommend is having some form of chaos resistance. Um, so mine's at 49% and I've not noticed an issue whatsoever. And um, the only reason you want it is I think there is a mod that gives um, enemies 100, 200% fizz as extra chaos. I say you're not going to notice it on normal mods because they don't do that much damage. But just in case you get, you know, map mods that might not be that favorable, get your chaos resistance as high as you can. Um, and really, that's all you need to do. You're going for movement speed, ailment immunity to make sure you're not getting chilled, uh, you're not getting shocked or ignited and then going for burning ground immunity and as much movement speed as you can. Um, and that's kind of it for the strategy. Nothing groundbreaking, really simple. But if you're quick at mapping, you're going to make very decent currency. Even if you're not particularly quick at mapping, the profit you're going to get per map, like I've said, is between 60 to 65 chaos um, in the long run once it's spread out. And it allows you to get sanctums done fairly quickly. And you can, again, just dump all the loot that you get from sanctums um, either to a different tab if we want to record it or just stick it all into the same dump tab. So I thought it might also be useful to show my overall tab because I've been doing this farm now for a few days. Unfortunately, I haven't been tracking like maps and time or anything like that because I only really do that when I want to show statistics for a video. Um, but this is my dump tab that I use when I'm doing a mapping strategy. Uh, then once I've filled my quad tab, I'll then look to go um, and sell all of the loot. So it'll take longer to sell it, but I'm just going to do one selling session. So we'll go into Excellence next and have a look at that tab. So it's 41.3 divines I've got in here in terms of currency. 
And as you can see, there's raw divines that I've already converted chaos with when I've sold a few bits. I'm also putting my sanctum loot in here as well. So a few divines might be from there. And then you can see here the amount of currency that I've got that's allocated to life force. And again, this is going to be massively underpriced because you can sell it in bulk for much more than what um, Excellence Next lists it's for. Um, but just with the divines that I've converted with some sales and then the yellow, blue and purple life force, we're sitting at almost 6,000 chaos. The only thing to ignore, these skitter and delirium orbs. I had delirium orbs drop from deli mirrors because you will get them every now and again when you use Fortune Favors the Brave. And all I've done is converted 11 delirium orbs into skittering using the blue life force, but I'm pretty sure I lost money, so I would not recommend doing it. Um, but that's why they're in there, because I basically used a lot of blue life force. Uh, I think it's blue to try and get um, some skittering delirium orbs. I got them, and I'm pretty sure I either broke even um, or lost money. Um, but as you can see, like I've been mentioning, the majority of the tab is taken up by things that drop from harvest in the altars. So you've got an invitation or two invitations. Uh, you've got your life force, divine orbs, chaos, stack decks from sanctum runs. You've got your forbidden woods and city square maps. I have a feeling I've delved into here and taken lots of maps out. Um, sextants, I'm making chisels, more embers, a sacred blossom, embers, regrets, bar orbs. So everything that turns up um, in the first like eight and a half thousand out of the 10,000 is all stuff you're going to sell super easy in bulk. And the rest of it you can either sell or you can then stack up. Um, and wait until you've got more bulk uh, and sell it. And that's really just, again, reiterating why I like the strategy, because the more and more you do it and the more you see um, your stash tab full of stuff that you know you could probably sell in a matter of, it would take me probably 15 minutes to sell the top lot of this up to like 8,000. And then I'd leave the rest and maybe revisit it um, once my tab is more full, because you're just bulk pricing and bulk selling everything for divines. Um, so all your three life forces are so super quick in divines. Your invitations will pretty much instantly sell as long as you price them sensibly. Um, like it's not 200, I'm selling mine for 210, 215, and I'm getting insta whispered for them. Um, stack decks, I open them. I think they're slightly more profitable if you open them, um, but you could sell them in bulk again for divines. Sextants, selling bulk for divines when you get enough. And then things like I'm making regrets, maybe selling lots of like 30 or 40 that a lot of people might be interested uh, in buying. Again, same with your embers. I don't normally bulk price them massively. The grands I'll maybe do for 10. Um, at a time and then the grade is maybe 20 or 30 and um, but that's again why I love this strategy because it's so easy to sell the loot and end up with liquid currency that you can then um, buy gear with or craft with and um, but that's it for the video not really much more to talk about um, Atlas will be in the video description um, along with a very brief explanation again of how to run the strategy thank you very much for watching take care and see you in the next one